Greetings friends, David Marks here with a basic Adobe Photoshop CC lesson for you today. In this tutorial, I'm going to cover the fundamentals of adjustment layers and layer masks inside of Adobe Photoshop. If Photoshop is new for you, then this tutorial is absolutely essential. If you're already well trained in Photoshop fundamentals, then this lesson will probably be old news for you, but this one is super important, so please stick with me until you're sure that you've mastered all of these concepts. Let's jump into Adobe Photoshop right now, and let's get started. On the screen right now is a portrait of my nephew, Levi, that I like. To pat myself on the back, I'm going to say that I got a good, sharp picture here. There's a nice expression on Levi's face and nice catch lights in his eyes. All the technical details are right in this portrait, but I find that yellow background distracting. When I shot this image, I intentionally used a very wide aperture to throw the fence and the forest beyond it out of focus but those rich fall colors, they pull my attention away from the subject. Fortunately, anchoring the viewer's attention on my nephew's face is easy using adjustment layers and layer masks here in Photoshop. To create our first adjustment layer here, I'm gonna go up to the word layer on the menu bar at the top of the screen, and then down to the new adjustment layer option. When I park the cursor here, a second menu will appear. For this example, I'm gonna choose the brightness contrast option which lives at the very top of this flyout menu. When this little dialog box appears, I'm gonna name this one something like Darken Forest. At this point, nothing dramatic has happened, but if you look over here in the layers panel, you can see that a new adjustment layer has been added to my layer stack. There are two parts, two symbols that are side by side for every type of adjustment layer in Photoshop. The symbol on the left, this one here, represents the type of adjustment layer that I've just created. This part represents the changes that I can make using this layer up here in the properties panel. With a brightness contrast adjustment layer, you can see that there are now two sliders here that I can use to make the whole image brighter or darker. Since a darker, low contrast background is what I want for this photo, I'm gonna pull both of these sliders down a ways. When I click on this little eyeball symbol here, Beside this adjustment layer on the far left side of the layers panel, you can clearly see that the changes that this layer makes are now affecting the entire image. This layer is making everything, including my nephew, darker, because right now its layer mask is all white. In Adobe Photoshop, the layer mask, which is represented by this symbol right here, is our targeting system. Think of this tiny white square here as if it covered my entire image. In Photoshop's visual language, on a layer mask, white reveals and black conceals the changes that this particular adjustment layer creates. In this case, I want the reduction in brightness and contrast everywhere but on my nephew's face. So to prevent this layer from changing the areas that I don't want to darken, all that I need to do is to paint with black while I'm working on this mask. I'm gonna press the letter B on my keyboard right now to activate Photoshop's brush tool. Next, I'm gonna select a big, soft, round brush. Now, I'm gonna set black as my paint color. The easiest way to do this is to press the letter D on the keyboard. D in Photoshop is the keyboard shortcut for the default paint colors, which are white and black. You can see these colors here at the bottom of the toolbar, and over there at the very top of the color palette. The brush always spits out whatever color is on top. So now I'm gonna press the letter X on my keyboard so that black becomes the foreground color, meaning black becomes the color of the square that's on top. Now, as I paint around with black on this layer mask, I'm telling Photoshop that I want it to mask out or block off the areas where I paint so that no change will occur to these parts of the underlying image. When I get to something that looks like this, I can turn the eyeball for this layer on and off again to check my work. That looks good enough for now, but of course I could zoom in closer if needed and paint with more precision. With minimal effort, we've now created a layer that's bringing down the brightness and the contrast in the background. So next, let's do the opposite and bring up the brightness a little on Levi's face. Easiest way to do this 
is to go layer, duplicate layer. I'm going to name this one Brighton Levi. At first, though, everything about this new adjustment layer is completely backwards. So I'm going to click here on its symbol, and then I'm going to move the contrast and the brightness sliders here in the properties panel to where they should be. For this one, I'm going to push the brightness slider up to about plus 20. Moving these sliders is giving me the kind of change that I want to create on this adjustment layer. But right now, our targeting system, this layer mask, is directing the chain that this layer creates towards exactly the wrong part of this image. If I hold down the Alt key on the keyboard, that's Alt on a PC or Alt Option on a Mac, and I click on the layer mask symbol, then you can see what's really happening here. The areas of this photo that are under the white part of this mask are the areas that are being affected by this layer. And the area in black is the place where no changes are going to occur. Remember that black is off and white is the symbolic color for on. And right now, this is all backwards. But fortunately, all that I have to do is to click right here on this invert button at the bottom of the properties panel to turn everything that is white on this mask black and to turn everything that's currently black into white. Bam, now my mask, our targeting system, is perfect. If I click right here on the adjustment layer symbol to the left of the mask, or if I use that alt click trick again, now we can see the whole image. Let me turn the eyeball off and on on this layer so that you can see the spotlight effect that we're creating here. If I turn both of these adjustment layers off, and turn them back on again. Now you can see how the two of these together are giving us a fill flash-like effect where the subject really stands out now from that busy background. Creating this additional separation was easy using just two adjustment layers. And since this is all that I need, I'm going to save my work using the file save command. Next, I'm going to close this image and then I'll grab another from my Lightroom Classic catalog. Now that I'm back in Lightroom, let me briefly emphasize the workflow that we want to follow whenever you're working with these two wonderful Adobe programs. If you're a Lightroom user, then my advice is to do anything and everything that you can to easily fine tune your raw captures here in Lightroom before you do any work at all in Adobe Photoshop. In this photo, for example, I turned this into this using Lightroom's fantastic raw image development tools only. If you're using the Adobe Bridge and Camera Raw instead of Lightroom or some other software, then I offer the same advice. Do anything and everything that you can easily do to fine tune your overall raw capture before you ever turn to Photoshop. But when the time comes for the level of precision that Lightroom or Camera Raw lacks, then it's time to switch programs. Do you see this beautiful yellow leaf right here. I'm going to admit that I put that leaf there. Not only will I admit it, but I'm going to tell you that I intentionally positioned this leaf right here in front of my camera because I wanted it to be the visual anchor for this photograph. Lightroom's develop module tools have given me the overall image, but to really focus your attention on this one little leaf, it's time for Photoshop. Fortunately, sending a copy of this file over to Adobe Photoshop CC is easy because Photoshop and Lightroom are designed to work together. To send a copy of this image over to Photoshop, I'm going to go Photo, Edit In, Edit in Adobe Photoshop CC. Now, there'll be a little pause as Lightroom cooks a copy of this RAW file and sends a new TIFF or PSD over to Photoshop. Once Photoshop opens, I want to remind you that the human eye is inherently attracted by a couple of things. When we look at a photograph, any photograph, our eyes automatically gravitate towards the brightest, richest, most saturated colors in the image. I repeat these words again and again in my tutorial because they are such an important concept. When we fine tune our images, it's these properties of human vision that we are going to manipulate. In the last example, we made my nephew stand out by making him brighter than his surroundings. Let's do the same thing here for this leaf and some of the rocks that surround it. To do that, I'm gonna go Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Brightness Contrast, just like last time. 
like last time. I'm gonna start by setting the change that I want this slider to make using these sliders in the properties panel. As you can see, the changes that I'm making here are currently affecting the entire image. That's happening because once again, our layer mask is all white. An all white mask in Photoshop's visual language means that the changes are allowed everywhere. So to turn everywhere into nowhere, I'm gonna click on the layer masks symbol over here in the layers palette. Next, I'm gonna tap on that invert button at the bottom of the properties panel to turn white into black. Once the mask becomes all black, it's as if it's having no effect. But of course I can cut a hole in the mask if I press the letter B to reactivate the brush tool. This time though, I need to paint with white. So I'm gonna press the letter X again to swap my paint colors. Now, as I drag the brush over my layer mask, I'm telling Photoshop to change here and here, but to leave everything that's covered by black in the mask alone. To double check my work, I'm gonna use that Alt, Alt Option trick again to see the mask full screen. This looks fine, but if I needed to clean things up, I could continue to paint away with white or I could press the letter X to paint out a mistake with black. Just like last time, let's push this spotlight effect a little further by duplicating this layer. Rather than going up to the menu bar though this time, I'm just gonna right click on this layer's name and then I'll choose the duplicate layer option from the flyout menu. Here, I'll give this one a new name. The name though, is far less important than what this layer actually does. To use this one to make my background a tiny bit darker, I'm gonna drag this brightness slider down to about negative five. That'll make things darker, but I also need to flip this layer mask over so that it changes the background and leaves our foreground rocks and the leaf alone. And of course, that part is super easy. All I have to do is click on the mask, and then the properties panel, I'll hit invert again. In the last photo, a change in brightness was all we needed to make the subject stand out. But this time, let's go even further. This time, let's make that yellow leaf the most saturated color in the entire image. To do that, I'm gonna go layer, new adjustment layer, hue saturation. I'll name this one something like yellow leaf. Next, I'm gonna click here where it says master in the properties panel and then come down to yellows. I'm doing this so that Photoshop does not saturate all the colors in the rainbow, which is what would have happened if we moved the saturation slider up back there where it said master. In here, I think a boost of about 35 should work. Now, at first, this change is affecting all of the yellow things in this photograph. Now, at first, this change is affecting all the yellow things in this photograph. Watch these trees in the background when I turn this adjustment layer on and off. See, right now, this layer is affecting all of the yellows because again, its mask is all white. So, once again, I'll turn an all white layer mask into an all black layer mask by clicking on it and going invert. Next, I can zoom in using the control and the plus key on a PC keyboard or command and the plus key on a Mac over this little leaf. Finally, I'll check that I have my brush tool active again and that I have the right color ready for my brush. Since I want the changes to happen here, I need white for my paint color and with a few paint strokes, voila. Since this leaf is sitting on a gray rock, there is really no need for precision. And watch how much more eye-catching this tiny area becomes when I turn this layer's eyeball on and off. To show you a complete before and after for all the work that I've done so far in Photoshop, I'm gonna hold down the Alt, Alt Option key on a Mac, and then I'm gonna click here on the eyeball beside the background layer. 
this looks great to me. So let me save my work again, and then I'll pull up one more quick example from Lightroom. This time, I wanna show you a little hint, a teaser of the power that you have once you begin to understand how adjustment layers and layer masks work in Photoshop. You know those photos that you see where part of the image is in color and the rest is in black and white? The name for that kind of image is the color splash effect, and it couldn't be easier using the skills that you've learned today. In this photo, for example, we have a full color image. If I wanted to, I could go layer, new adjustment layer, black and white. And if I did this, the whole image would turn black and white. So now, if I got my paintbrush and got black paint, I could paint on the mask to keep my skier in color. Painting over the skier would be just fine. And if I zoomed in, I could be way more precise. But let me delete this layer and I'll show you what can be a huge time-saving alternative. This time, I'm gonna make a selection before I create my adjustment layer. Selections, meaning the marching ants, tell Photoshop that the area inside of the ant line is the area that you want to change. Now, selections are a topic where one can learn a lifetime's worth of additional skills. But in this case, all we need to do is press one button. Built into Adobe Photoshop CC is a little bit of artificial intelligence called the Select Subject. This tool doesn't always work, but it's always worth a try. To ask Photoshop to put ants around the skier here, all I need to do is go Select, Subject, and I'll give it a second, and bam. It may be hard to see, but do you see this line of marching ants around my skier? Now I know that selection isn't perfect, and I'm sure it missed a few spots, like this ski tip over here, but we can add those areas in later. The important part here, the teaser of the skills that are in my more advanced tutorials, is that whenever you create an adjustment layer while you have a selection active, then Photoshop will automatically turn your selection into a layer mask. Watch, if I go layer, new adjustment layer, black and white again, as soon as I hit OK, my ants will disappear, but Take a look at that layer mask. The area that was inside of the ants, the skier in this case, is now the area that Photoshop has automatically painted white for me when it made this mask. The area that was outside of the ant line, the parts of the image that I had not selected, are now black in the mask. This is great, but of course what I really wanted was the opposite. So once more, I'll click on the layer mask, and then I'll tap on the invert button at the bottom of the properties panel, so that white becomes black and black becomes white. And just like that, we've created the color splash effect. People often think that this style of photo is hard to make or that it takes some complex processing skills. The truth is, it couldn't be easier. All that it takes is one adjustment layer and one good layer mask. Now, obviously, I should zoom in and do some cleanup with my brush tool. I'm not gonna make you watch me paint more precisely though, because it's the concepts here that matter. It's the how the layer mask works and how easy it is to tell Photoshop to change something here, but not there using our symbolic paint colors that matter today. I hope that these layer masking skills make some sense for you now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in our next tutorial.